Welcome to Will It Work? I am Kevin, and today we're looking at the APF TV Fund, which is a Pong system. Uh, there's a few different iterations of this particular Pong system. I th I've seen them with multiple controllers uh, and a light gun. I believe a light gun. Uh, I may even have more than one of these. Uh, maybe I have one with the four players. If I do, I would probably distinguish it as being a different model number. Because if I look at this, uh, you know, there's just a power plug. There are no connections anywhere for anything additional. So this is the model 401A. And I would think that it is probably, you know, all it is. Uh, more than likely, this runs on our favorite uh, 8500, AY8500 chip. Uh, since it's just four games, professional amateur ball speed, on off, start. I will say though that this one is, it has a nice style for being rather basic. You know, it has the uh, controls on, you know, the, the unit itself. There's no serve button. I'm certain it's black and white. Uh, you know, but it has a, it has nice uh, buttons. These are kind of heavy switches, which is nice. Uh, even these buttons feel good. There is a little power light LED right there. Uh, you know, we've seen a lot of these, and a lot of them are pretty grotesque uh, looking. Uh, you know, this has that nice 70s wood grain looking bit to it, etc. This is also one of the very first Pong systems I started to collect. I don't remember if I picked this up in a Goodwill or if I had ordered it online, but I do know that this was really early when I started uh, scooping these up. You could usually find um, these kinds of things in Goodwill, uh, you know, Salvation Army stores or um, uh, just your local thrift shop or whatever. Uh, nobody wanted them. You know, they were just in the back. Some people would come in looking at like uh, cartridges for like the Atari 2600s and and such and and they would look you know for the one, rare ones but they would leave all the rest behind because there was no there was no market for uh, even like the you know the basic ones or, or anything of that sort uh, and um, uh, you know Atari ColecoVision maybe in television like if those were donated they would sit in the back nobody wanted an 8-bit system uh, and, um, I think, you know, largely the Nintendo Entertainment System joined that group as well, but I would think around when people started disposing of, like, Genesis and Super Nintendo, uh, they didn't, um, end up in the thrift shops, because by that point, people were, you know, by that point, like, you know, I started doing this in maybe 93, 94, uh, and, um, I think when people started to, um, get on the internet in 97, ni you know, 96, 97, uh, I don't know if eBay was around, I don't think eBay was right there just yet, or if it was, it wasn't well known, but it didn't, it didn't take too long uh, for eBay to appear, and then, um, you know, so you got into the turn of the century there, or, or whatever, millennium. Uh, certainly uh, a lot more people were starting to collect systems, but I, I don't, really don't think it started to kick in um, until about t 2010, maybe. Uh, so anyway, in terms of Genesis and stuff, it, it, it uh, uh, and, and Super Nintendo, it came later. Well, anyway, we're going to uh, put some batteries in this one, and uh, we'll uh, turn it on, and we'll see if it works. And if it does, we'll switch over to the video side for a quick look at just to see if it's our usual uh, chipset. If it doesn't work, uh, I'll probably come back here and uh, have a few closing thoughts on it. Okay? All right, here we go. Okay, we're looking at the uh, APF TV Fun. And uh, we have a fairly clean signal here. Controls are pretty good. Like this one feels good. Like it, you could put this unit into your uh, living room today if you had, you know, if you wanted to. And this was compl this is completely playable. Like there's no jump with the range of motion here. Uh, it's 
pretty solid. Not, not that you would. I, I'm just saying. Like, this one's pretty clean. Which I'm glad, I'm glad about. It always makes it a little bit easier when I don't have to open it up. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Game selection two. So this is more of the... Uh, this, this is what I call hockey. Because you've got a player on one side and a player on the other side. And then sometimes you have you know both your players on one side that's what i would think of as like doubles tennis or something so this is like this is like hockey and this is you know racquetball basically one guy bounces it off the ball and the other guy uh, you know gets it off the ball etc switch turns and probably practice is the yeah and practice So, uh, you know, interesting, too, that, like, practice mode is using the right side controller and not the left. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just an interesting choice because I think, you know, I think most systems, when you go for single player, it's usually on the left side. But there's lots of variations with that, too. Commodore 64 always kind of cracked me up because... Uh, it it um it had two cartridge ports you know and uh, joy one and joy two and every game ever released for the thing uh, pretty much used exclusively joystick port two unless you were you know playing a two player game then it would use joystick port one I don't know why that is like I I don't know what was like Bogarting Joyport 1 in the early days of the Commodore 64 to make it so you would want to use uh, um, the, the other Joyport. But that's how it was. So I always just thought that was funny stuff. Like, you want to plug plug in the joystick, make sure it's in Joyport 2 for single player. Anyway, APF TV fun. It's Keeper. It's working good. Glad for that. Uh, let's uh, get off the Pong and move on to something else. Thanks for watching. See you next time.